today's lecture we are discussing the oscillators, oscillators that are used in the electronic component and we are discussing the types of oscillator. Basically oscillators are defined by the classified into the two main categories. One is the linear oscillator that is also the harmonic oscillator and second is the nonlinear oscillator that is the relaxation oscillator. In the harmonic oscillator the energy flow is always from the active components to the passive component and the frequency of the oscillation is decided by the feedback path. While in the relaxation oscillator the energy is exchanged between the active and the passive component and the frequency of the oscillations is determined by the charging and discharging time constant involved in the process. Moreover, if we talk about the harmonic oscillator that produces the low distorted sine wave outputs while the relaxation oscillator generated the non sinusoidal output in the form of the sawtooth, triangular and the square waveform. Apart from that we are having the many oscillators, many, many type of oscillators. The oscillators can also be classified into the various types depending on the parameters considered that based upon the feedback mechanism, number 2 the shape of the output waveform and these classified have the given below we will discuss now right now. The classification based on the feedback mechanism are of the two type, one is the positive feedback oscillator and second is the negative feedback oscillator. Classification based on the shape of the output waveform that is also of the two type like sine wave oscillators like square or rectangular wave oscillator and swift oscillator which produces the saw tooth output uh, waveform. It means uh, the, on the basis of uh, shape, uh, shape the output waveform we can classify the oscillator. One is the sine wave oscillator, second is the square wave oscillator, square wave or the rectangular wave oscillator and third is the sweep oscillator that produces the sawtooth output form. Classification also the based on the frequency of the output signal means output signal we are getting the low frequency, high frequency or type of frequency, radio frequency, audio frequency on the basis of that we classify the uh, we classify the oscillator. So, first is a low frequency oscillator, audio oscillators whose output frequency is in the audio range. Next is the radio frequency oscillators and uh, the high frequency oscillators, very high frequency oscillator, ultra high frequency oscillator extra. So, we classify the oscillator on the basis of the frequency as in the output signal. Moreover, we have the classification types of the frequency controlled used means we can control the frequency. So, we can uh, classify these um, like that RC oscillator, LC oscillator in which we can control the frequency uh, of the uh, frequency in the output. So, RC oscillators, LC oscillators, crystal oscillators. Crystal oscillators means uh, which uses a quartz crystal to result in the frequency stabilized output waveform means we are getting the frequency stabilized. Why we are using the word stabilized because we are controlling the frequency. So, it is so, so we classify on the basis of the frequency control like RC oscillator, LC oscillator and the crystal oscillator. Moreover, classification based on the nature of the frequency of the output waveform like fixed frequency oscillator or the variable or the tunable frequency oscillator. So, we are having the fixed frequency oscillator, we are having a variable frequency or the tunable frequency oscillators. Classification, now we discuss in detail the three types of uh, oscillators like RC oscillator, LC oscillator, crystal oscillator that classified on the basis of the type of frequency control. So, some of the frequency control oscillators are number 1 is the RC oscillator, number 2 is the LC oscillator, number 3 is the crystal oscillator. Now, you see on the screen that these are the three type crystal, why is a crystal oscillator which uses a quartz crystal 
to result in the frequency stabilized output of waveform. So, we discussed the first the RC oscillator as the name suggests resistance capacitance oscillator. You are seeing on the screen that this is a resistance capacitance oscillator or in the short we can say it as a RC oscillator. By using RC component in the feedback branch a phase shift occurs between the input of the RC network and the output from the same network. So, there is a change in the output because of the feedback. So, input is again moved through the second inverting stage giving a phase shift. How this is phase shift by giving the uh, which is the same as providing the required positive feedback. So, uh, so a phase shift occurs between the input of the RC network and the output from the same network. Why it is happening and input is again moved through the second inverting stage that giving the phase shift which is the same as providing the required positive feedback. It is suitable for the low frequency oscillation and is generally used to generate low frequency signals 1 hertz to the 1 megahertz. So, this type of RC system we use for the low frequency signals. The circuit is composed of the four part. What four parts are? Number one is the amplifying circuit, second is the frequency selection network, third is the positive feedback network and fourth is the amplitude stabilization. So, uh, this circuit we design by using the amplifying circuit, frequency selection network, positive feedback network and the amplitude stabilization. So, main advantages of uh, this type of uh, RC is it is a it is a very very simple having the very simple structure it is economic and convenient and belongs to the audio frequency oscillators means when we get the audio output then we use this type of the RC oscillator. For an RC oscillator to sustain its oscillations indefinitely sufficient feedback of the correct phase that is positive feedback must be provided along with the voltage gain of a single transistor amplifier which is used to inject adequate loop gain into the closed circuit in order to maintain the oscillations allowing it to oscillate continuously at the selected frequency. As a selected frequency why? Because this is a controlled, uh, controlled frequency type of uh, oscillator. So, you see on the screen here what we are having, we are having the components here, amplifier with the gain is defined here where we are giving the input, this input from where we are getting this input from the output through the phase shift of the 180. You see we are having the amplifier with the gain, in the next we are having the we have the feedback network and you are seeing the there is an input on the left hand side and output on the right hand side in particular amplifier with gain the voltage is supplying a particular value of the voltage is supplying to the circuit. And this output feedback through the feedback net network and that is a phase shift to the 180 degree going to as an input to the amplifier and again this cycle will go on. So, oh, the positive feedback is important in this RC oscillator. In an RC oscillator circuit the input is shifted 180 through the feedback circuit returning the signal out of the phase and 180 again through an inverting amplifier stage to produce the required positive feedback as the as it is going towards this. This gives us the 180 degree plus 180 degree that is the 360 of the phase shift which is efficiently the same as the 0. So, thereby giving us the required positive feedback. In other words, the total phase shift of the feedback loop should be 0 for any multiple of the 360 to obtain 
obtain the same effect. So, phase shift to the 180 and again it is going to 180. So, it is a total will be the 360 degree phase shift. So, this is a condition that uh, that we required for the for positive feedback uh, there is must be a phase shift of the loop must be 0 or any multiple of the 360 that obtain the same effect. What is the vibration process in this when the power is just turned on there is a various electric electrical disturbances in the circuit. So, and relatively large feedback voltage is generated through the feedback through the frequency selection network that passing through the continuous loop of the linear amplification and the feedback. So, oscillation voltage will continue to do increase. Second is the oscillation frequency. The oscillation frequency is determined by the phase balance conditions. Only it meets the phase balance condition at F0 the oscillation, uh, uh, the oscillation frequencies uh, means uh, uh, charging R and C can change the oscillation frequency. Condition for startup and stable oscillation in this case, then we taking account of the starting condition like A f greater than 1, where R 1 should be selectively slightly larger than 2 R 1, the value too large cause the series distortion oscillation waveform. RC serial parallel sine wave oscillators circuit composed of an op amp that does not rely on the transistor inside the op amp to enter the non-linear region to stabilize the amplitude. But, the, but to achieve the purpose of amplitude stabilization by introducing the negative feedback from the outside. Another, uh, another point in the RC circuit is the stable amplitude like the growth process of the oscillation amplitude cannot continue forever when the amplitude gradually enter the saturation or the cut off zone from the amplification zone working in a non-linear state and it gain gradually decreases. So, when the amplifier gain decreases and the loop gain decreases to the 0, the amplitude increases process will stop and oscillators will reach the equilibrium stage. So, for the RC oscillator circuit increasing the resistance can reduce the oscillation frequency. In the RC oscillator if we increase the resistance then the oscillator frequency reduces and it does not need to increase the cost. Frequency of the sine wave generated by commonly used LC oscillator circuit is relatively high than that of the RC. If the low frequency sign oscillations is to generate it, the oscillation circuit must have a larger induction on the capacitance. Then this will not cause the components to be bulky, heavy or the inconvenient to install, but also difficult to manufacture and high cost. Therefore, the sinusoidal oscillation circuit below 200 kilohertz generally adopts the RC oscillation circuit with a low oscillation frequency. Another you see on the screen that another type of oscillator are the LC oscillator and this type of oscillator is also called the LC oscillating circuit that is also the resonance circuit and that is the tank circuit or the tuning circuit. It consists of the capacitor or the parallel coil as a LC. Uh, LC it like that uh, so we can say, uh, use it as a capacitor, capacitor and the inductor. So, the circuit has inductor L and the capacitor C. Capacitor store the energy in the form of the electrostatic uh, fields and generate the potential on their plates while the inductance coil store energy in the form of electromagnetic field. What the working of the capacitor? Capacitor store the energy in the form of the electrostatic field while the inductance coil store the energy in the, in the form of the electromagnetic field. By placing the switch in the specific position, the capacitor is charged to the DC supply voltage. Uh, means we here by the DC supply we charge the capacitor. When the capacitor is fully charged the switch 
is switched to a certain position the charge capacitor is connected to parallel to the inductor coil and so the capacitor start to discharge itself through the coil. You see on the screen here we are having the electromagnetic field. Now you see that uh, here we are having a inductor and uh, voltage supply here and there is a capacitor load and L is the inductor and C is the capacitor and it is connected. Now here A and B are the switch on and off when we connect it with the battery. So you can see this uh, animated video that there is a electron flow towards, well, towards the inductor that is the LC oscillations takes place and you see this is the magnetic energy and here the electrical and electric energy is flowing towards the and the output is going uh, back towards the energy battery. Now when what we do and you see here the electrons will move through this circuit. Now when we uh, just replace uh, this inductance with the uh, you see here we are having the RC circuit here the it is completed although we you this are seeing that how the electron is flowing and we are getting the graph in the same manner. This is the current versus voltage. Now we uh, just remove it then we put it in the LC circuit. Now you see the graph again the current and time graph in case of the LC circuit. Now it is again the continuously we are having the graph this is the graph between the so we can write it as this is the VL voltage across that can be written as the minus L di by dt and uh, now the now it is uh, current is flowing towards the inductor now this graph will now you see the graph here the feedback is also going towards the now we are in a sinusoidal wave like that. So, this wave in the form of the sine wave when we are using heavy, heavy we are when we are having the LC circuit. So, there is a flow of now the circuit consists of the inductive coil and that is represented by the L and the capacitor that is represented by the C. The capacitor store energy in the form of the electrostatic field and it produces the potential means the static voltage across its plate while the inductive coil stores the energy in the form of the electromagnetic, electromagnetic field. So, the capacitor uh, so the capacitor is charged up to the DC supply voltage that is on a V. Uh, uh, the capacitor is charged up to the DC supply voltage V by putting the switch in the position A, A is the uh, where we, we have, you have seen in the diagram there is a two point A and B. So, so capacitor is charged up to the DC supply voltage V by putting the switch in the position A. When the capacitor is fully charged the switch ch changes to the position B. So, the charge capacitor is now connected to the in parallel across the inductive coil. So, the capacitor begins to discharge itself through the coil. The voltage across C starts falling as the current through the coil begins to rise. So, the circuit consists of the inductive coil L and the capacitor C. So, the charge capacitor is now connected to the parallel across the inductive coil so the capacitor begins where so the capacitor begins to discharge itself through the coil the voltage across c starts falling as the current through the coil begins to rise in the next case this current charges up capacitor c with the opposite polarity to its original charge so c continues to continues to charge up until the current reduces to zero and the electromagnetic field of the coil has collapsed completely. So, energy originally introduced uh, into a circuit through the switch has been returned to the capacitor which again has an electrostatic voltage potential across it through although it is now of the opposite polarity.
So, capacitor now starts to discharge, there is a charging and discharging in the capacitor again back through the coil and the whole process is repeated. So, the polarity of the voltage changes as the energy is the passed back and the fourth between the capacitor and the inductor producing uh, an AC type sinusoidal voltage and the current waveform. This process then forms the basis of an LC oscillator tank circuit and theoretically this cycling back and the fourth will continue indefinitely in this tank circuit. So, things are not perfect and every time energy is transferred from the capacitor C to the inductor L and back from L to C. Some energy losses occurs when delay the oscillations to the zero time. So, this oscillatory action of passing the energy back and forth between the C to the inductor L would continue indefinitely if it was not for the energy loss within the circuit. Electrical energy is lost in the DC or real resistance of the inductor coil in dielectric of the capacitor and the radiation from the circuit. So, the oscillation steadily decreases until they die away completely and the process stops. That is why we are getting the damping oscillations. That is particularly LC circuit the amplitude of the oscillatory voltage decreases at each half cycle of the oscillation and will eventually die away to 0 and this oscillations are known as the damped oscillation with the amount of damping being determined by the quality or the Q factor of the circuit. So, in the LC circuit we got the damped oscillation. You see on the screen that here this is these are the damped oscillation. You see we are having a small r then we are having the uh, larger on the small r the larger time for the damping of the oscillation. In the larger r, uh, small r, when there is a small r, there is a larger time for the damping of a oscillation. When there is a shorter time, then uh, when, when there is a large r, the value of large r, then the damping time is very short. So, here we are having two condition, small r, then highly uh, damped at a longer time and when larger R heavily damped at a shorter time. So, we are having the two condition voltage here we are uh, defining here a constant voltage is given to that. The frequency of oscillatory voltage depends on the frequency of the oscillatory voltage depends on the value of the inductance and the capacitance in the LC tank circuit. And we know that for the resonance to occur in the tank circuit there must be a frequency point where the value of Xc that is a capacitive reactance is same as that value of the Xl that is the inductive reactance. So, capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance that is Xl is equal to Xc and which will therefore cancel out each other leaving only the DC resistance in the circuit to oppose the flow of current. Now, if now we place the curve of inductive reactance of the inductor on the top of the curve of the capacitive reactance of the capacitor so that the both the curves are on the same frequency axis. So, here both the curves are the same frequency axis the point of intersection will give us the resonance frequency point that is F r that F r is the resonance frequency point and omega r that you see on the screen here we are having the frequency point like that when both the curves are meeting this is the this is the circuit oscillator oscillator circuit 
you see. The LC circuit is uh, not only used for generate the specific frequency signal, but is also used to separate a specific frequency signal from a more complex signal. Means by using this we can separate the signal also, not only generate, but separate the two signal uh, like frequency signal from the more complex signal. That is why we are this LC circuit are used to remove the noise in the circuit, because it can uh, they are the key component of the uh, many electronic equipments, especially radio equipment. Uh, it is a having the ability to separate a specific frequency signal from the more complex signal. That is why it is used in uh, in the form of the filters also like uh, the, uh, it it the the components in many electronic components uh, we use especially like radio equipment used in the oscillators filters tuners and the mixer circuit it is a ability just to separate the one signal from the another. The inductive circuit is an idealized model because it assumes that there is no energy dissipated due to the resistance. So, the actual realize, realization of an LC circuit will include the loss causes by the small but non-zero resistance of the component and the connecting wire. The purpose of the LC circuit is usually to minimize the oscillations. So, the resistance is made as small as possible. Although there is a no loss less circuit in the practice, studying the ideal form of this circuit is beneficial to study the physical phenomena. When the electromagnetic oscillations occurs in the oscillating circuit, if there is a no energy losses, no external influence, the period and frequency of it at this time are called the natural frequency and the natural period of the oscillating circuit. Another type of the oscillator uh, in the category of the frequency control is the crystal oscillator. In this uh, some electronic devices acquire the AC signal which highly stable frequency, but the LC oscillator has a poor stability and the frequency is easily drifted. So, frequency of uh, generating AC signal is easy to change. A special component that is the quartz crystal is used in the oscillator which can generate a highly stable signal. So, when we require the highly stable signal, we use the quartz crystal. And the kind of oscillator that uses a quartz crystal is called the crystal oscillator. And the mainly composed of and this crystal oscillator mainly composed of the crystal or the peripheral components and the crystal oscillator the main frequency determining the element is the quartz crystal. Due to the inherent characteristics of the quartz crystal oscillator it has extremely high frequency stability. So, a crystal oscillator we will discuss in the further lecture. Up to now we have discussed the what is the oscillator and types of oscillator in which we discuss the frequency control oscillator, RC oscillator, LC oscillator and the further uh, one of uh, this oscillator we will discuss in the further lecture. Thank you very much.